Michelle from Gaius Workshop, and today we're going to be making a 15-inch Red Stag Deer harmonic shamanic drum. By the nature of nonlinear time, we just happen to have the drum that we're about to make right here. This is it. The difference between regular drums and the harmonic shamanic drum is that the handle has five spokes instead of the regular four. It's got 15 holes instead of the normal 16. The reason that this is an advantage is that there isn't a uneven pull on the head. All the, all the laces pull evenly. Um, also, you have five fingers. It's a very, very comfortable handle to hold. We'll play this drum for a little bit so you can see how it sounds, and then we'll go into the instructions on how to make one. So enjoy the video. Let me know what you think. Thanks very much. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make what's called a four knot. It's a uh, quick release knot. And the way that you do it is you make take your lot, your short end and make kind of a four over the top of your long end, and then bring a loop through your four like that. If it's slippery hide like this deer is, you, you probably have to make two loops. And then when you pull your long end, it'll stay. You want to want to do that directly in front of you. I just turned it so you could see what we were doing. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that your hoop is centered right in the center of your hide. And to do that, just pull it up at the sides, kind of all around, and make sure that you've got about the same distance on all sides. Grab your lacing and go through the long end. And any place you have a knot or a tangle, take it out. You're going to want to hang on to the end of your lacing except when you're actually putting it through holes. And what I do is I'll wrap it around my last two fingers and just let it go through my hand. So our first hole is going to be seven holes from where we started um, and going in a counterclockwise direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to go through from the top to the bottom, from the sky to the earth. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull that all the way through. you see it's still in my hand. Your next hole is going to be to the left of the knot. Go through from the sky to the earth again and pull it through again. Um, if it tangles up like this that's okay because as long as you haven't let go of it it's only a tangle and not a knot. So just shake it out and keep on going. Next hole up to the left of the second hole You'll see you're working in a clockwise direction. Clockwise is the direction of manifestation. They call it diacil or sunwise. And you're just going to keep going, working in a clockwise direction. And every once in a while, stop and check and make sure that you're still balanced. If your lacing start getting kind of sticky, wet them down again with your spray bottle. It's good to keep everything good and wet. If it gets too dry, it'll break.
Now at this point, you're not trying to make it too tight, just kind of, not even firm, just kind of there. We're going to be doing several tightenings after this part. Okay, so when you have the entire drum laced, you want to do another one of those four knots right here. If you have big flaps of lacing like this, you can cut them off. Make sure not to cut them too close. Make a weak spot in the lacing. Okay, so the next stage is the tightening. The first thing we're going to do is examine it and see if there's any places that are a little bit not quite over the hoop as far, which is this one and this one are not quite over as over as far as these. So we're going to start over here. And normally I do this with the drum facing me, but I'm going to do it this way so that you can see what's going on. You want to grab the hole and the lacing and reach up kind of underneath it and pull it down like that. So what you're doing is basically smoothing the head of the drum over the hoop. It's going to stretch differently in different parts of the hide. We stretch a lot more horizontally than we do vertically, if you think of your belly. So when you get back to where you started, you want to lay it down with your beginning knot right in front of you. And if you trace it, you'll see that it goes to the hole directly opposite. It comes in from the underneath, and then there's one coming out the top. You want to pull in that top one. And then if you let that one dangle a little bit, you'll see that it goes to the whole cross, and you want to pull on that top one. All the way through, pull in the top ones. And this time you want to make it snug, not tight-tight. You don't want to stress it. You just want to make it snug. And again, when you get back to your end point, tie another one of those little knots. <clears throat> now, depending on how thick your head is, you may have to do this process four or five times before your drum is sufficiently tight. I'm going to do this one more time, but this time I'm going to do it facing me just because it's easier and I can see what I'm doing. So I'm doing that same, pulling it over the hoop. Okay, what you're going to end up with when, you're, when your drum is ready is you're going to end up with a really lively surface, almost like um, yeast bread when you've kneaded it enough and it's all alive and, and poppy and it's almost a drum already. So this one actually is going to need a slight bit more tightening, um, but that's going to come in with the lacing. So the next thing we're going to do is tighten up the lacing for all the uh, slack that we just gave it. Again, you're going to pull the top one all the way around. And this time you want to make it really good and snug. Put a little muscle into it. Now you see that this is a little firmer than it was before. And this is ready to be a drum. So 
Next thing we're going to do is make the handles. You want to make sure that when you do your last tightening, you don't let go. Keep the pressure on it. And then you're going to take your lacing and just put in your put in a handful. Go through between your first knot and um, the hole next to it, and come out between your last hole, like that. And then pull everything into the center. So you've got a nice centered drum. And the first thing that we're going to do when we make the handle is we're going to wrap three at a time. We're going to wrap them out with the rough side or the, uh, um, the off side out. And then we'll wrap them back. So we're just going to come around like this to these three, right next to the one with the knot, not including that one, because that's going to be our last one. And just make sure that you've got the rough side out and that you only have three lacings. Drums are sneaky. Sometimes they'll sneak a fourth one in. You want to lay them right next to each other and you want to keep tension and pressure on them at all times so that they're good and tight. The tighter you can keep your handles at this point, the nicer they'll come out when they dry. I probably have my hand right in the way. And you're going to go out about two inches, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, depending on the size of your hands and the size of the drum. You want it proportional to the drum and you want it big enough for your hands. When you get to the end, you go over the first one and under the next two and pull it good and tight. And then you're going to lay it over the top with the smooth side out. Just lay it right next to each other and keep it good and tight. Now you will occasionally run into places where your lacing gets wide like that. That's from being cut on a curve and those can be trimmed, which will make your, your handle make look much nicer. So just slice those off as you get to them. Okay, when you get back to the base of the handle, just pull the whole thing real hard, kind of work it with your hands, and then move on to the next one. My first knot came untied. It's not really a big deal at this point because it's all, um, what do you call it? It's all, uh, kind of tied down anyway, but uh, just retie it if it comes untied. Okay, so the next one is going to go over the top of that, then under this, which is going to turn it over so that you have the rough side again. And you're going to wrap this one exactly the same way. And remember to keep my hands out of the way of the photo. Always kind of pull towards the outside when you pull it. That way they'll lay real nice next to each other. And then when you get the same distance out, go over the one and then under the other two to turn it. And then start wrapping back down. Okay, so when you get to that point, again, pull it real tight, work it with your hand a little bit, and then go on to the next one. Again, you're going to want wrong side out. You're going to do this for four of the five handles. So we're just going to keep going.
Okay, and then the fourth handle. Okay, so when you get to the last handle, it's time to tie your first piece in. Again, we got one of these little funky things here, so we'll cut it off. Okay, so you're gonna come through underneath, basically along the same line as where the hole is, and then go back across and then skip two, come up, skip two, go down, come back up and then go down into your, th into your handle like that. And then take your long lacing and you're gonna wrap the handle just like we did the other, th other four. Just make sure you've got the little end from this one inside your wrap. I'm going to turn this back around so I can actually get to it. Mm -hmm. over here. If you do about three wraps, And then give a good pull on your end. It should be on the inside. Sometimes pliers helps, but I didn't bring any with me. And then just clip it off. Okay, again, over one, under two, pull it good and tight, and then wrap it back down to about halfway down. And then what you're going to do after you cut out the weird little funky thing here, is you're going to start wrapping it over your finger. Make sure that it doesn't get twisted up and it stays right side out. Okay, when you get down back to the end, you go underneath around here. Take your other finger and drop your loops down and then run that end through the loops. And then tighten your loops as you go. When 
get to that point, you can just grab this from underneath and pull on it. You want to give it a good pull. It'll kind of pop underneath the center. And then while you're pulling it kind of hard, cut it off. That way it'll go back up inside. You won't have a pokey bit. Okay, the last stage is to just smooth the drum out. Looks like this one's going to be happy without any pins. But if there are sections that don't want to lay down, you can use thumbtacks to hold it down while it dries. So there's the drum. Bouncy, almost alive, and all ready to go. Thank you very much.